When we studied elastic collisions, you may remember that we simplified the problem by having one mass stationary and the other mass moving towards it. And then we studied what happened. Now we're going to make it a little more complicated. We're going to look at elastic collisions with a moving target. All right, so let's see. That would look something like this. Mass 1 coming in at V1 naught, and mass 2 coming in at V2 naught. And you may also recall from our previous work on elastic collisions that we sort of had the momentum initial equals the momentum final, the kinetic energy equals the kinetic energy initial and final, and then we did some algebra tricks on the kinetic energy to cancel some stuff out, et cetera, et cetera. We could take that approach here, and the solution you get is also fairly simple. It's just about twice as long. So if you want to memorize that solution, I'll send it to you. Shoot me an email. I'll send you that solution, or you could find it in any textbook. But what I want to show you here is these problems are a lot easier if instead of doing all that algebra, we apply a little bit of physical intuition and insight and our knowledge of Newton's laws. So what we're going to do is we're going to think of these two masses that are colliding as an isolated system. And you remember what Newton's laws tell us when we have an isolated system is that the change in momentum of the entire system with time equals zero, right? Because we know it's forces that change an object's momentum. But as long as this is isolated, all the forces are between two objects. Therefore, all the action-reaction pairs cancel. So if there is no net forces on the entire system, then there can be no change in the entire system's momentum. What we're going to do now is kind of take it back apart. But if you think um, of the system, as a single object, let's think what's going to happen. When I say take it apart, I mean this momentum term. Remember, we started with m times acceleration, m times delta v over delta t. And we argued, well, if mass is constant, we can stick it in there and call this delta p. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to say, this is a system of particles, but let's think of it as a single particle. And we can take the mass out. And then we're back to mass times delta v. So the mass of the whole system would just be the mass total, right? m total. The delta v, what kind of delta v would that be? It would be the change in velocity of the center of mass. OK? So now let's define, talk about the center of mass. So the center of mass. And that's what COM means. You'll see COM written a lot on subscripts on problems like this. It's the position where a um, system of objects acts like a single object. I think I can make it. Oh, no, I didn't make it. Acts like a single object. That's the idea. Any system of particles, whether they're attached to each other or even free, has a center of mass where you can apply Newton's laws to the whole thing at once. Just to give you some intuition for it, let's just draw a couple of masses and think about their center of mass. Here we have a mass m. Here we have an identical mass m. They both weigh m. Where is the center of mass? It's right in the middle. There's the center of mass, right there, right between them. If you have a big mass here, m1, and you have a little mass here, 2, the center of mass is more towards the big mass. It's probably something like right here. It's sort of the mass-weighted position. If you consider the position of these two masses relative to some origin, and you said, well, this one gets a certain weight because of its mass, and this one gets a certain weight because of its mass, you end up in the middle. This one, this gets a certain weight, and it gets a lot more. So it pulls the center of mass towards the heavier mass. And you can get into calculating this 
for more and more complicated objects. But this point, the center of mass, is special. It actually makes this be true. Specifically, in this case, we're saying that if this is zero, if this is zero, then this is zero. Well, if that's zero, and we know the mass isn't zero, what it means is this special point called the center of mass doesn't change. If in your initial setup you have the center of mass moving, it continues to move throughout the collision. Before the collision, during the collision, after the collision, center of mass just drifts along. This becomes mathematically useful, which we'll show you in the next board. But first I want to stress that the center of mass doesn't just apply to individual objects, it also applies to extended objects, or not just to little spheres. You can think of an extended object like this. This is my, one of my favorite objects, this is my Teflon rod. You can think of this as a bunch of little teeny masses of Teflon, little Teflon molecules throughout this whole thing. And even an extended object like this has a center of mass. And it's in the middle. Right? There's a calculation that can show you it's in the middle. You can also kind of, with uh, a demonstration, show it's in the middle. So if we think of this as the center of mass for an extended object, you think of all the mass, it acts like it's all concentrated right at the center of mass. So if I were to take all the mass of this thing, concentrate at the center, and put it to the left of my fingers, it would fall, right? If it were really just a little Teflon mass, it would fall to the left. Well, if I put the center mass of the rod to the left, it also <coughs> falls to the left. But if I had it all concentrated down and put it right on my fingers, all the mass of the Teflon right there, it would balance, right? Well, if I put the rod here with the center mass right over my fingers, it balances. So for a symmetric object like this, the center of mass is always sort of what you would expect visually the center, the point where it would balance. When objects get asymmetric, maybe it's denser over here than over here, then it can show up in strange places. But I just want to stress, that's the idea of the center of mass. It's where a system of objects or an extended object acts like a single object. So now let's look and see how we can use this idea.